Eamon Khan here for seconds out with George Lidard in Las Vegas. A small fish for now, he says, off camera, but soon to be big, I'm predicting. George, how you doing? Very good, thank you. Yeah, like I said, off camera. Always watching the interviews of Eddie and that, seeing if I get name dropped in any. But, you know, we're a small fish at the minute, but you watch, I'm going to be a shark in a pond. <laughs> good to hear, good attitude to have. And uh, Eddie, will have dropped your name in the sense of, for this card, you're on the card now, talk about getting a call for Las Vegas. What can I say? I don't need. I don't think I even need to comment on that. Boxing in Las Vegas, you know. I think everyone knows how uh, grateful I am and um, appreciative of, of, of the opportunity. Just looking forward now to Saturday night so I can get my hands flying. Pressure to perform because of the scale, because of where you are right now, early in your journey, that you got this opportunity, you got to deliver. Honestly, the only pressure ever comes from myself to be the best. To be the best me. If, you, if anyone that knows me knows that, I know when I go in there, I will win Saturday night. But how I do it is important to me. I, I want to put on a good performance. And that's the only pressure. But I think, you know, pressure makes diamonds. Um, and when I put pressure on myself, you normally see the best me. How long have you been in the States for? We've been out in LA for three weeks. Um, I think we got here Jan the 6th. So nearly a month now by the time I go home. Um, what an opportunity. Uh, sparring. I sparred uh, some good fighters over in LA. I sparred um, Serhi Barachuk. All right. He's fighting. He's just been announced to be fighting for a world title um, at Super World. So great sparring. You know, looked good. Um, Ronald Ellis, who's one of Canelo's main sparring partners. Um, you know, great rounds with experienced fighters, and uh, grateful for the opportunity. And you know, always learning. I was speaking to Jimmy earlier about the differences between sparring over in the UK and sparring over in America, and he, he gave me a good answer on it. He felt there was quite a few differences. Did you feel any differences in, in the maybe the ethos of sparring, what you learned from sparring at all, from what you get over in the UK and what you get over here stateside? I think we're quite lucky in the UK in the sense that in our gym we have high-level fighters, so a lot of sparring is tough anyway in our gym. Mm. But I feel like sometimes when you do spar outside of the gym, sparring in the US compared to the UK is different. I think there's more of a like a, a dog fight kind of like everyone wants to especially when we're matching fighters coming over here everyone wants to make a name for himself you know everyone wants to come down bash up the English guys right <laughs> but uh, it's up to us to obviously box smart and uh, you know work on what we're working on um, but yeah like, like I say back in the UK I think sparring's a bit more friendly because you know people that you spar but out here I, I'll be honest I like hard sparring because I don't want to get to that fight and then when, if the going gets tough crumble I want to be in the gym sparring hard, morning's hard, training hard every day because, you know, I think that builds your character. And when you're in those tough fights, I don't know if you've seen my six round fight with that Dutch fella, uh, with Bass, mm. he kept coming. He was tough and he had a chin and some some fighters might have crumbled, you know, but because I have that tough sparring with Conor Ben, I had obviously Felix Cash before, John Ryder, I had Craig Richards, you know, um, it, it's, it's bringing the best out of me. What are your goals then, in your own words, for 2024? Where do you want to be towards the end of the year, starting off with this weekend? Yeah, obviously, get through this weekend, put an undefeated fighter on my resume, uh, get the win. Uh, and then hopefully, I want to try push on for 10 and 0 by the end of the year, realistically. You know, keep stepping up the levels. And, uh, you know, Tony's my manager. He, he always says to me, you're 21, you've got to take your time. And I, I will take my time. And I'll obviously do what my management team sees fit for me. Um, but, you know, I'd like to obviously push for a domestic title either end of this year, start of next year. Um, I know the level I'm at and I know the level from what I'm sparring at. Like I say, sparring world level fighters, not just back home, but here as well now. Um, you, you're going to see some, you're gonna see me in some good fights come the end of the year, next year. You want this weekend to be your last six rounder? Uh, I think it's up to Tony. I, I personally, I'm happy to go up to eight. I'm, I'm, you know, I train hard. I, I, I spar 10 rounds, 12 rounds every now and then. Uh, sparred 10 with John for this fight numerous times. Sparred eight, you know, I have two sparring partners, four, four with each, fresh fighters. I'm ready to step up to eight when, 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 when it, whenever. Um, but, you know, I'll leave that to my management team. Last two fights uh, went to the distance. Um, any disappointment for you in that sort of sense, wanting those knockouts, those early finishes? We're in a social media age where you've got to kind of keep your name in people's mouths and get those highlight reel moments. Uh, are you looking to nail one down this weekend? Before I didn't get the stoppage at the 0-2 in my full fight, I thought it was all about, you know, knocking people out and you're looking good doing it. But I learned a lot from that fight that maybe I wouldn't have learned. If I went out there and knocked him out in the first or second round, I wouldn't have been took to places that I hadn't been yet in the pro ring. So I'm grateful that I went the distance there. Last fight, believe that, you know, if I was fresher going into it, could I have got him out of there? I do believe so. Um, but, you know, you are only as good as your last fight. So 
got to put on a good performance this weekend. And uh, yeah, no, I wouldn't. I'd be lying if I said I wouldn't like to land a good shot and uh, get him out of there early and uh, get out, eat some fast food in Vegas. But um, yeah, no, uh, I take take it as it comes. You know, I, if I don't get him out of there, I win every round. So just whatever whatever happens on the night, you know, however he comes out. I'll make sure I put on a good performance. Okay, at the top of the guard, you've got Connor Bennend against Pete Dobson. I saw the face-off yesterday between the two by the Las Vegas sign. Connor, as he does sometimes, putting it on Pete Dobson, uh, maybe shaking him a little bit, at least from the Ben perspective, that was the case there. Uh, but you feel that Ben's ready and primed to uh, get another knockout. 100%. Um, Connor's looking sharp, strong. I've seen him sparring out here. I've been watching quite a, bit, a few of his bars. He's looking one of the best I've seen him, um, you know. And I, I can't see it any other way than him getting him out of there within, a, within the first three, four rounds. So, excited, you know, good win for all of us, hopefully. Me, Jimmy, Johnny Fisher, obviously Essex boy and Connor. be great if we can all go home with a win and, uh, yeah, show us how, show these uh, Vegas people how, how Essex boys do it. With Ryder having suffered defeat to Jaime Munguia, potential talk about his future and whether he continues in the sport as an active fighter. If he was to leave the gym because he would retire. Quite a big hole there in the gym, considering the amount of sparring he gives, the experiences he's had as well, the route and the path that he's had to. How would you feel if uh, Ryder was to, I mean, he's the man, he's going to make his own decision, but if he was to hang up the gloves, the hole that would leave in the gym? Of course, and I wish John all the best with whatever decision he makes next. Um, you know, he's a wise man, he knows what's best for him, what's best for his family, so I'm sure he'll make the right choice. Um, even if he does retire, do I see him leaving the gym? I don't think so. I think we'll see him down there still a bit, you know, whether he holds the pads for us from now to again or, you know, has a bit of an active role in our career. But, you know, John's a great man with a lot of experience. So I'd be gutted to see him go completely. Um, but I'm sure he'll stick around, you know, whether it's just hanging around the gym or, you know, helping us out. So, yeah. George, leave a final word with you. What happens in your fight this weekend? Vicious, explosive performance. Um, you know, the harder they come, the harder I'll push back and, uh, like I say, he's not going to want to. He's not going to want to lose. He's unbeaten, but he's coming to put on a performance on a matchroom show. He's had a great opportunity himself fighting in Vegas, so uh, I'm expecting nothing but a tough fight, but one in which I will be victorious and uh, I'll look good doing so. George, good talker. Thanks for being sex out. Thanks Looking forward to you.